Good morning, everyone. Before I talk about UP's internationalization initiatives, allow me first to say a few words about the Emerging Interdisciplinary Research Program, or EIDR, which supports the Book Course Research Program, the organizer of this, of this uh, forum. UP established the EIDR program to promote and intensify the research culture in the university. Through it, we hope to encourage our faculty and constituent universities to design and carry out large-scale projects that draw from their diverse specializations. The response has been inspiring to say the least. Within seven cycles, we were able to implement a total of 62 EIDR programs and projects across disciplines, linking the physical and natural sciences with the humanities, and the social sciences with management, to name a few. In the eighth cycle, we received 40 applications, and we are funding as many of them as we can, as far as our budget can afford. The Book Course Research Program, for example, brought together UP researchers from the Asian Center, the School of Economics, and the Department of Political Science, as well as a foreign collaborator from South Center in Geneva, to implement seven studies that revolve around such themes as labor migration, inclusive growth, and development in post-conflict regions. So EIDR is unique in that it provides funding for the whole range of disciplines in the university, something that has not happened before uh, in this uh, great scale. Because uh, most of our funding comes from the Department of Science and Technology, the Department of Agriculture, which tend to fund only programs in the natural and physical sciences and engineering. Collaboration, especially at the international level, is very important to a university. It is a way for us to broaden deepen and enrich the results of our scientific and creative endeavors, and in the process, we grow professionally and personally. By partnering with other scholars and academic institutions, we are able to share and obtain tools, methods, processes, information, and good practices that can help us improve our work and our service to society. Above all, collaboration deepens our understanding of the history and culture of other peoples, which are key to strengthening mutual respect, trust, support between individuals and between countries. In fact, most of UP's international partnerships are with countries in the ASEAN, with which we not only share a history, but also the same goal to achieve peace and prosperity. Individually as nations and jointly as neighbors in an economically dynamic region. And for these reasons, UP also implements programs under the supervision of the Office of International Linkages to enable highly qualified students to go to a foreign university to study or to undertake research or creative work. For faculty members, we found short-term visits abroad that will lead to publications and other research or creative development. To make UP more visible on the global map, we provide travel grants to researchers and graduate students so that they can present their papers at international conferences. Moreover, we support the holding of international gatherings in the Philippines to encourage eminent world leaders from the academia, from government, or industry to travel to the country and give special lectures or talks such as this. Thus far, we have supported the travel of 14 world leaders. Internationalization also entails benchmarking ourselves against universities in other countries. It is time that we look beyond our own shores when it comes to raising academic standards. For if UP aspires for regional and global competitiveness, then we also help our country become globally competitive. In this regard, UP has undertaken measures to formalize quality assurance of our programs and to date, we have five degree programs that have completed and passed the assessment by the International Panel under the ASEAN University Network Quality Assessment Framework. Likewise, beginning in 2014, we have synchronized the academic calendar with that of universities in the region, which means that the academic year in UP now starts in August. 
unlike the quarreling it commenced in June. This decisive step had to be taken to simplify student and faculty mobility and ease academic exchanges and collaborations with universities in the ASEAN and other parts of the world. The forum this morning is representative of why UP values interaction between local and foreign experts. First, it provides a venue for deeper discourse, in this case, with first-hand information on foreign policy developments that have an impact on the region and our country. Second, it is an opportunity to build, or build more, academic cooperation, and in particular, between the Philippines and Russia. I would like to thank Dr. Viktor Somsky for coming to the Philippines to share with us his expertise. I also congratulate the UP Asian Center and its partners, the UP Third World Studies Center, Center for Integrative Studies, and the Department of Political Science for making this forum possible. Most of all, I'd like to thank my inspiration, former President Francisco Menenzo, for my speech in the University of the Vice President of Academic Affairs, he is the inspiration. So thank you for gracing this occasion. You honor us with your presence. <coughs> Bottom line, I'd like to speak to the young um, students, the young leaders of this university. It's the reason we come together, because you've got to commit. You've got to own it from within. So if you're driven, uh, towards academic excellence and scholarship, you must be convinced from within to try to attain higher standards of academics and scholarship as a basis for performing, serving the university and the country. So I'd like to say that um, the, um, the last speaker at the Open Forum talked about uh, some important basis for solving problems that beset our country and our region. And I always say, uh, and the uh, Deputy Director of the OIL is here, my fellow chemist, uh, Dr. Aaron Villaraza, until you're able to understand problems at the chemical level, okay, whether it is in environment, energy, pollution, uh, agriculture, food, nutrition, uh, molecular uh, studies relating to health, disease, well, wellness, and wellness until we understand natural phenomena, national, nat national um, problems on that level, I would say that we would not have, uh, we would not be able to address the problems in a very, very um, fundamental way. I'm not saying that it's only uh, chemistry and the natural sciences that are required to solve our problems, but definitely we cannot do it without a deep understanding of the material world or the world of substances, and that is our discipline in chemistry. So thank you very much for um, uh, hearing me out, even while I'm late, for this very important occasion. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, VP.